uh, these example hands are going to be jumping kind of back and forth from concept to concept. That shouldn't be a real issue, but um, it's not going to be just, you know, first concept one, then concept two, then concept three. Uh, it's going to be a bit of everything, and, and some of the example hands are grouped together according to concepts, but um, many are not. So I'll just talk you guys through it, make some comments as we go, and in doing so, then you'll have seen hopefully everything that we've covered and everything that you're going to need um, to really dominate, um, at least properly understand play at the low and mid limits. And these principles also, of course, um, govern high stake play. Uh, it's just a whole nother bag. <laughs> And as always, um, see the respective videos for the different games on how you should adjust and how different stack sizes, of course, adjust what you play, where, and for how much. So again, primary principle, primary goal of these videos, of this sub-series, is just to show you bet types as such, bet sizing, different moves, just to give you an idea of how that plays out, what it looks like, what you're up against. Okay, so we've got here sixes and a min raiser from a fishy kind of guy um, under the gun. All right, so he min raises, and we'll drop that down a speed. We get one cold caller theoretically, even though it is a min raise. That's a cold call, and so I'm actually theoretically making a three bet here. Okay, uh, typical. Textbook three bet would be, of course, three times the initial raiser to three plus one for um, every cold caller, which would have been up to four. I want to build this pot up with my with my small mid pair here. What I'm looking for is a six on the flop, so I'm so-called set mining. And when I hit my six, I play on. If I don't, I'm pretty late here, and I may be able to push these guys off a better hand. So that's the idea. Again, if you want to be totally consistent, then just make that exactly, yeah, just keep with the text exactly four and play on. You're going to do that with aces. You can do that with four or five suited. Um, yeah, again, changing that bet sizing. Know when you should do it and under what circumstances. But, okay, so here we just do uh, two and a half time the guy. And that's going to give respect to pot odds to this guy here, as we just saw. For the... Big blind of 2.6 to 1, or he needs 28% to hit that flop. So suited Jack King, you know, that's definitely a callable hand, uh, given those pot odds. And these guys are now getting really good odds over here at 5 to 1 and 6 to 1, respectively. And, of course, actually, he should have been calling a lot more. Um, yeah, no idea. Maybe he thought I was kind of uh, making a smaller bet on a really strong hand, which a lot of people do. Uh, so, anyways, this guy calls and we see the flop and we flop a really strong hand it's unbelievable we did flop top set and it's a two suited highly connected board so again a lot of these calls uh, min raise calls that's going to be small middle pairs as mentioned it's going to be suited aces from time to time <laughs> so namely we've got a two suited board like we're going to see sixty percent of all flops uh... he could have been playing seven eight uh... three four would have flopped the miracle um, Three fourths highly unlikely in that situation. Uh, suited seven eight might play, you know, these kind of these kind of things. A lot of suited Broadway. Um, so we are we are a bit worried against two players that there might be a flush draw out there, and play continues. So under the gun, I'm sorry, the big blind checks. Under the gun checks as well, and now we're on to make our standard continuation bet. And this is a two suited board, so we go ahead and make. I hope yeah, very good. We make a proper two-thirds, more or less, um, continuation bet in position. And I'm going to be doing this, guys. I'm going to be making that exact same move with air. When I'm playing ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, um, yeah, you know, suited ten-jack, whatever. Uh, let's say a three-bet light, um, as actually was the case here with sixes, um, with, yeah, suited uh, nine-ten, whatever. And I totally whiff. I'll be making the same bet size because of what? Because of fold equity. Right? And just real briefly, I want to pull that back up to show you guys uh, what we're looking at. Whenever you make a bluff, let's say, whenever you bet half pot and you're bluffing, you need 33% of the time, you need your opponents to fold 33% of the time in order for you to break even in the long run when you're on a pure bluff. Uh, when you make a standard two-thirds pot, pot size 
continuation bent, which is recommended on two suited and connected boards, then you're going to need your opponents to fold 40% of the time in order to pull that off, which isn't much. That means they've basically got to fold here, you know, one time in three, and here two times in five. Now, what does that mean for your opponent, the so-called villain? When you bet half pot, he's getting odds, pot odds, of three to one. It means he has to hit, if he's on a draw, one time in four to break even in the long run. It means he needs break even equity of 25%. Good. When you bet two thirds pot, irrespective of if you're on a bluff or not, these are the pot odds that your villain's getting 2.5 to 1, namely exactly 28.6%. So keep this in mind. This is uh, very indicative of C bet play. Um, when you see this one third kind of pot situation, um, that's very often either a really big hand or complete crap. That's, you know, sometimes, depending on the history and the players and stuff like that, you can make moves like this that kind of look like block bets, um, especially on the river, when they're not, when they're actually value bets, as we had mentioned. Um, you, know, you change that up a bit, but when you're on the flop and somebody makes a, a third or a quarter pot bet, it's a great time to float. Just call it in position and then uh, yeah, take the initiative on the turn in the river and or just raise it directly. So anyways, that's how that breaks down. And we'll get back to the action here. And we make a two-thirds more or less pot size bet, giving him exactly, as mentioned, more or less 2.8 to 1. And he needs 27% equity to make that call. And in this case, I have no idea what this guy was thinking, but he does. <laughs> so he decides to go ahead and call us with two over cards and basically a yeah, backdoor flush draw. And we get one fold. Turn comes, which does give him a lot more equity. You know, he's got now this, um, he's got his flush draw now. And he probably thinks his jack and king might still be good. So, I mean, the craziest scenario would be that he would give himself uh, the full 15 outs. Um, not thinking that we flopped a set. He may put us on a flush draw as well. And he checks it. And this time we're not fooling around, so we go ahead and put him all in because he could be on either of these two flush draws. Um, could have had just a bare pair of eights, pair of fours, um, and that's not a time to be slow playing. Uh, it's also not a time to be slow playing on the flop. And so we got to put him all in on the turn with the 84% equity advantage, and I believe he misses yet. Okay, so again, guys, don't slow play on two suited boards. Um, make your bet sizing, your C bet sizing similar to when you whiff, also when you flop those sets, when you flop the monster straights and flushes, two pairs. And yeah, always keep it consistent. It's a good way to, especially when you're beginning, um, don't deviate from the textbook play. Just keep it real simple. And again, um, if you want to keep it exceedingly simple, and you don't want to worry about all this, you know, four times a big blind plus uh, one per limper, uh, three times the uh, open razor plus one per cold collar. Um, if you just want to keep it super, super simple, just remember one uh, one number, and that's three. All right, so open raise, three big blinds. Re-raise, three times the action before you. Re-re-raise, three times the action before you. Okay, anytime that's more than half your stack or even a third, go ahead and push. All right, that's a very simple way to look at that. Uh, other guys would just say, okay, just keep four in mind, whatever. Um, but as we've already looked at in great detail, um, yeah. Once, yeah, once you get some experience on your belt, what we covered um, in the equity calculator is, is very, very sound. So, yeah, stay with the textbook as well as you can. Deviate according to playing conditions, um, but only do so really after you get quite a bit of experience on your belt. All right, next time. So we got nines here in the middle, and we get a guy who opens again here. This is just three times a big blind. Again, playing NL50. And we've got nines, and we're deep stacked. So this time, instead of raising this guy, although he is quite, we've got 36 hands on him, but he, uh, he is raising quite a bit. So we decide this to call for set value. Uh, and again, uh, you'll notice here, my stats on, on these example hands were a bit... We're a bit wild. I'm doing basically a 2-1 split here on the pip to PFR. 
and that was pretty standard all the way up to like 50,000 hands. Um, the competition here was <laughs> a bit different, um, and yeah, they would let you get get away with this kind of stuff of cold calling um, in middle position, not getting re-raised. All right, or raising real light, and in this case, as you see here, you know we get a bunch of callers. It's really good for our nines because now the pot's up to 675. Let's see. Okay, that was it. Yeah, 675, and then we flop our set. So this is exactly what we're looking for when we make that cold call in position. Um, again, you could argue for raising. Uh, you can change it up. Anyways, we do go ahead and just cold call, and we want to see that nine. Otherwise, you know, if we if we hit the set, we bet. As the saying goes, no set, no bet. We let it go. All right, and we do hit it. So the open raiser, early position open raiser, he checks. And here at this point, we're doing so-called pot building. So this is a non-suited, non-connected board. Okay, ten jack, and and one of these players could have well been playing ten jack um, to overcall here. Um, but what I want to do here is build this pot up because I do have this really strong middle set. Anybody playing the queen, uh, ace queen could have also overcalled. Uh, even queen king, queen jack, uh, queen ten suited, for example. Um, all these hands will probably give me action on at least one or two streets. So I just, you know, I make a small bet, a little less than uh, half. And given the next guy, you know, almost four to one odds. And he calls it. This guy lets it go. And now, right? Flop comes, monotone, I'm sorry, uh, rainbow, non-connected board, queen high, and he check raises us. At this point, I'm thinking ace, queen, you know, maybe queen, king for a check raise is pretty, pretty hefty, um, but more than likely uh, over pair. Right, maybe he's got kings, maybe he's even got aces, he check raises with kings or aces here with the over pair. Maybe he does have the 10 jack and he wants to check raise semi bluff. Okay, that would be a check raise semi bluff with a 10 jack here. Uh, even stronger if it's two suited. Okay, let's say it's a 9 and a queen of clubs and he's got the 10 jack of clubs. That's a very, very strong hand against any top pair or over pair. Uh, we do have the sets, of course, we're ahead, but um, anyways, he does check raises and I've got another guy behind me who only has $19, uh, uh, $19 left. Uh, namely 38, right? Yeah, 38 big blinds. So I don't want to necessarily re-raise here. If this were a, a two-suited board or a connected board, I would definitely re-raise. Um, but I want to keep this guy in. I want to build that up. So I just call. Now, this is pot manipulation. This is slow play as such. Kind of a small bet. We get check raise and only call with a guy behind us so that he can come in after the fact and increase our our net value. <laughs> So he unfortunately doesn't play, uh, and now this guy checks the turn. So open raise, early position. This is what you're thinking. This is his line. Gets a lot of over callers here, a lot of cold callers actually, and he check raises full pot size on the river. I'm sorry, on the flop. Turn comes, and he checks again, and we're both here. I'm I'm big stacked. He's even still deep stacked at this point. We're already here where the pot is the same size as your stack. You're looking to pretty much push anything that, that uh, you get active on. Okay, you can go ahead and, you know, bet half your stack, more or less half the pot here. And, you know, he may let that go, may or may not. Uh, if you're on semi-bluffs here, you definitely need to push it um, to increase your fold equity to the maximum. And that's kind of what we're looking at. But this guy then makes this funky check again on the turn. And now I'm looking at a two-suited board, and let's see how I played it. Okay, so I go ahead and bet a really strong um, three-fourths pot size here. And, yeah, thinking he's going to come over the top for sure, uh, and hoping like hell he doesn't have queens. <laughs> um, but he does something that I didn't expect, and he lets it go. All right, so this in this case, you know, betting that strong, I didn't push all the way here because I wanted him to come on over the top and that was my move to maximize value here again uh, with such a strong hand you could also argue for betting half the pot um, but I'll be making I'll be making this move also with ace queen um, you know also if, if I want a semi bluff here with 10 jack uh, similar bet size maybe even pushing like I said 
yeah. So you always want to be thinking, you know, how would I play this? How would I play this hand uh, in this spot against this guy, given a different hand, right? And there, you know, you want to you want to keep it consistent. So that's what we're thinking here. He lets it go, and we take it down.